Hello guys and girls, Raj here, back with another video. It has been one week since I am uh, back from reInvent. Uh, in case you haven't checked this out, check out uh, my earlier video. I'll put the link here uh, on my adventures in reInvent. Uh, also holidays are around the corner. Uh, hopefully you guys have a learning objective. Uh, so personally, um, I'm trying to learn AIML. Uh, new features and enhancements. Okay, back to the topic. During reInvent, uh, AWS announced uh, provision capacity for Lambda. Also, Lambda console was changed. Uh, so in this video, uh, let's dive deep on that. So we are gonna uh, go over how does Lambda scale, and then we'll go over the two different concurrency settings. Uh, all right, guys, uh, let's jump into the video. So one of the great features of serverless is uh, it scales automatically with the traffic. So how does uh, Lambda scale? Uh, let's take a look. So let's say you have a Lambda and it gets invoked, right? Uh, what happens is a container spins up, uh, your code gets loaded, and then your code is run. Uh, so this container and loading your code, all this stuff, is managed by AWS uh, behind the scenes. You don't have to do any of this. Um, however, the time it takes for this container coming up and loading your code is also uh, known as cold start. Uh, so it's basically the time uh, between when you actually invoke the Lambda and when the Lambda actually starts running. Uh, so let's say this particular Lambda is being called concurrently, right? So uh, as soon as this Lambda invocation comes, at the same time, let's say uh, more, uh, la more connections are coming in, uh, invoking the same Lambda. So for each of these concurrent invocations, uh, underlying a, a container or a micro container will spin up and load your code and then it will be run. So there are two important things that we need to know. So one is the limit of scaling, right? So uh, like we said, this is container number N, but what is N? Like, can you define uh, how many concurrent execution can a Lambda execute? And number two is uh, rate of scaling. Uh, like how fast these containers come up uh, and uh, is there any problems with it? So uh, let's take a look at uh, limit of scaling first. Okay, so coming back uh, to the concurrency, uh, there are two different ways to set concurrency. Uh, so one is this unreserved account concurrency, and the second part is uh, provision concurrency. Uh, this part is actually new, it just got announced uh, during uh, reInvent 2019. Um, okay, so let's dive deep into account concurrency. And to explain this, um, I'm actually gonna dive into console and show you. So we are in AWS console. Uh, so let's say we have this Lambda grid from country uh, and this Lambda uh, can execute concurrently, right? Uh, so if you scroll down, okay, here we go. Uh, so concurrency, under concurrency, we have this unreserved account concurrency set to 1000. What this means is at any point of time, the sum total number of concurrent executions for all the lambdas combined in this account is 1000. Let's say there are 10 lambdas in this account uh, and this grid from country is one of them. Uh, so let's say at some point of time, uh, the grid from country is concurrently executing, uh, let's say 900 times, right? Uh, so out of 1000, this one Lambda is uh, consuming 900 concurrent execution reservation. Uh, so the rest nine Lambdas have to share the remaining 100, right? Uh, so by default, this is like use unreserved account concurrency. Uh, so this is basically first come, first serve. Like whichever Lambda uh, start running concurrently first will start using up this, uh, uh, this limit. Uh, you can change that, uh, so you can reserve the concurrency. So if I click this reserve concurrency, and let's say uh, I put it as 200. Uh, so what that means is um, the concurrency limit for this particular Lambda uh, is 200. So 
even if it gets called more than 200 times at any point of time, what will happen is uh, there will be 200 concurrent execution and the rest of the executions uh, will get throttled. Uh, but sometimes, you know, that is useful uh, uh, because let's think of a scenario where your Lambda is talking to an underlying database. And maybe your database can only handle uh, 200 connections per second, right? Um, so if you let your Lambda run loose and create maybe like 1,000 concurrent execution, your database cannot handle it. So it can crash or throttle. Uh, so sometimes you want to um, control that. Another thing to note is um, this is a soft limit, this, this 1,000. Uh, so you can always create a service ticket or call AWS and increase this uh, limit for your account. Okay, so now we know how to uh, determine the limit uh, for Lambda scaling. So how about a rate of scaling? So what do I mean uh, by rate of scaling? Uh, so remember the scenario where uh, your lambdas are getting executed concurrently n times. Let's say your lambda goes from zero to 1,000 concurrent executions in one second. However, it takes some time uh, to, for these containers to come up, load your code, and all that stuff. So uh, if this, this happens, like zero to 1,000 in one second, uh, there is a chance that your lambdas will throttle, right? Because the underlying uh, infrastructure uh, is not created in one second. So how do we avoid that? Uh, so let's say you have a lambda which you know has very unpredictable spike, like, like in very short amount of time, it can go from zero to 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 or something. So how do you know that the Lambda is always ready, right? So that your end user who is consuming the Lambda results is not waiting. Um, so for that, we have provisions concurrency, uh, which is announced new in reInvent 2019. So what this provision concurrency is, is basically pre-initialized execution environments. Uh, so if you remember how Lambda comes up, so if you say to AWS, hey, I need 100 provisioned uh, concurrency, uh, AWS will spin up 100 containers, load your code, and keep them ready to go. So basically, no cold start or throttling uh, due to super fast scaling, and AWS will always keep this assigned capacity warm. Okay, we are back to the console. Uh, so provision concurrency, uh, is right under the unreserved uh, account concurrency section that we just uh, learned about. Uh, so you can click either this add or add configuration. So if I click this add configuration, uh, so one thing to note is uh, you can only configure provision concurrency for an alias or a version. Uh, so you can select the version for which uh, you want to do the provisioning concurrency. And then you can put uh, the provision concurrency, right? So let's say I have 500. So if I save this, uh, so if I scroll back down, okay, so you see this is in progress. Uh, so uh, what it's doing is, I think you guys already figured this out by now. It's actually uh, doing this process under, under the hood. Uh, so it's spinning up uh, 500 micro containers, uh, loading your Lambda code and keeping it ready. Okay, so there is one uh, thing that we should keep in mind with this though. Uh, so this has an additional cost component to it uh, because AWS has to keep this uh, 500 uh, infrastructure uh, ready uh, for you, right? Which is not like your regular Lambda. Uh, so if I go back, it actually gives a link to estimating your cost uh, so if you click that, you can see the provision concurrency pricing, click that. Um, so there's basically a price for how long you are requesting the provision concurrency for and how many. So for this, you pay whether you execute the Lambda or not, right? Because AWS is setting aside a certain uh, amount of infrastructure for you guys. Um, so anyway, so only use it when you need it. Uh, and do the do your cost calculation. So for now, I'm just going to uh, remove this. 
Okay, uh, so that's how Lambda scales and that's how you can control concurrency. All right, guys, that is the video. Um, also, one more thing. So I'll take some personal time off next week. <laughs> I've been working so hard making videos for you guys uh, that I didn't take any vacation this year. Um, so yeah, so I'm very much looking forward to a week off. But what that means for you guys is I'll probably be making more videos. Uh, like I have a full-time job, family, and all that stuff, but I really love uh, teaching and making videos. Um, so yeah, so you should, you should expect uh, more than one video uh, next week. Okay, and again, if you like this video, uh, like any of my other videos, please give it a like and uh, click subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.